expecting much different in the way of, of kicks that are coming your way now that the regular season has arrived and, and what you guys are seeing in, in preseason? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's probably going to be some different kicks. Um, you know, they're, they're not showing us everything that they did in preseason, and, and we're, we're the same way. So uh, we'll see. We're Hopefully we're ready to roll. Tandem, your two lane tandem, uh, Jackson and Spears back there return kicks. Yeah, those, those guys have done a great job during training camp. Uh, obviously, they, they have trust in one another, and, and that's a big thing, you know, when those two are working together. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we're, we're ready to roll. We're excited for those guys to get out there. How big was it for Stoney to get a preseason punt in just so that he could kind of shake off the rust and, and any, anything that might have entered his mind? Oh, it was, it was great. You know, he. Uh, I told you guys when I first met Stoney, he, you know, everyone knows what he's about, but he, he really is a competitor and he's a hard worker. And um, for him to get out there and, and, and get, you know, one, one punt um, under his belt before we get into the regular season is a big deal. And, you know, on top of that, the holding too, you know, get out there and, and get familiar with Nick again is, is a big deal. To come in and see his work back, what's that been like to kind of have a front row seat to see Stoney's progress? It's, it's awesome. Um, you know, when I first got here, I don't, he, he could barely walk. Um, you know, he, he had a pretty significant injury and, um, you know, our, our training staff's done a great job with him, getting him ready to roll. And, um, you know, he, he approaches every day like it's game day. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be around him and coach him and uh, fired up to see what he does on Sunday. Anything unique about the stadium as far as how the wind blows, anything that I guess the specialists have to be ready for? Yeah, it's a, it's outdoor outdoor field, um, you know, right on the lake there. So, uh, you know, we got to be ready for everything. There's there's going to be, you know, weather conditions, weather. There could be some rain, but uh, we just got to be ready for it. Does the pace or anything really shift for you after the cut to 53 as you learn kind of who your core guys are going to be? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's – yeah, it's definitely – I mean, we, we go from 90 to 53 pretty quick. Um, you know, with 16 being on the practice squad. So uh, the, the depth gets gets shrunk down, and, and the guys you're working with um, is, is minimal, you know. And, and, you know, we only have 48 on, uh, up on game day. So, um, you know, it's it, it's challenging in that way to, to, to figure out who's going to be out there, but it's exciting, and, and I like the guys we got. Has the new kickoff rule changed in any way the types of guys you look for among the blockers and tacklers? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, kickoff return, you're looking for guys that can, can block in space. Kickoff, you're looking for guys that can get off blocks. And, um, you know, you could probably say there's going to be more defensive guys on, on uh, kickoff and, you know, maybe some more offensive guys on KOR. But end of the day, I, I keep saying it, we're, we're looking for football players, guys that can go out there and make plays in space and block and get off blocks and um, tackle at the point of attack. What's Jaquan kind of done to earn your confidence as a, both kind of the lead punt returner and kick returner going into the season as a rookie? He, he's done a great job. Um, KB, uh, one of our coaches, you know, is with him almost every day, just working on him, working on you know the the, the details of, of being a returner in this league and you know all the rules that goes with it. And um, his maturity is 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 something that it, 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 I should note. He he's he's a mature young kid and um, he handles his business and he knows that's going to be his ticket is being a returner in this league. And so he approaches it as such. And um, he's just done a great job. And and we're excited for him to to be back there. Got that can handle the personal protector role. I think Molden had done that some last year and leading up into preseason this year. Yeah, uh, Mike Brown, one of our backup safeties. Um, Julius Wood, he's a guy we just signed from Dallas. Uh, both both backup safeties that are uh, confident, um, smart guys that can go in there and, and get us in the uh, right protection. What did you see from Nick? I guess from the from uh, you know during the course of the off season leading up to the to week one. Can, can See, I guess from him, continue. Yeah, I, the, you, you hit it. It's consistency. He he just he's consistent. In everything he does in life. Um, there's no surprises with him. Uh, you know, he's helped me become a better coach. This the, the the approach that he takes day in and day out is pretty remarkable. And he's uh, he just handles his business and doesn't get too excited, doesn't get too low, and um, you know, excited to have him. How do you view the tight ends? I know Callahan talked about probably not even be able. To being able to have all five active, so maybe three through five and what they can bring. Yeah, we're excited about that that position. You know, as you guys know, we kept five, and uh, there's a reason we kept five. They're they're all guys that we feel can play in this league. Um, you know, a handful of them are going to be special teams players, and um, you know we're going to rely on them significantly to, to fill those roles. What did you say to Thomas? I don't think we've talked to you since this play against the Saints. Uh, what did you say to him? And is he an example you point to for other guys about effort? Yeah, you you tell. 
Tom to do something, he's going to do it. And his effort, the way he handles his business is, is like no other. Um, you go out there and say, hey, we need you on the red kickoff team, our scout kickoff team, we need you to cover 10. He's going to cover 10. Um, doesn't flinch at anything he does. And for him to make that play, I'm not surprised. Um, just because the effort he puts in at practice is, is, is pretty cool. And uh, it, it was a really big play that he made, and it was awesome. So what I said to him, I just was fired up for him to, to make that play because it's, uh, it's a 10-point. You know, we, we miss it, and they go down and score seven. That's a 10-point swing. So really won the game for us at the end of the day. Just how excited are you, I guess, to, to all the work you maybe put in leading up to this point to kind of see how it all plays out on Sunday? I think for today, it finally just feels real. You know, this week it felt like we're – you get to do all this preparation and kind of talk. And, you know, when you start in April and in May, it feels so far away. And then those guys walked in on really on Monday, but re on Wednesday, it was like, okay, we're going. And these are, this is what we're doing. This is how it's going to be. This is kind of the getting used to the process and kind of seeing it all come to life has been, been fun this week, but we're, we're excited. Talk a lot about the, the kind of the reserve tight ends being surprises a little bit and making the roster, but I wonder if you could talk a little bit about maybe the top two guys, Chagan and, and Josh Wild and sort of, how you evaluated their their off season, their their training camp as well? Yeah, you know, I think they both had a great off season. I think Chig, kind of, really was just steady the whole camp. You know, it was great for him to be. He was healthy the whole camp. You know, probably he was in every day. So I think just getting the banked reps for him was awesome. Josh had a really hot start, and then he kind of got hurt, and now he's kind of getting back and kind of the uh, what last week he got back and kind of just started getting his legs back under him after missing a week. So those two really for us have kind of taken they're kind of not I don't want to call them interchangeable because they have different you know kind of different skill sets but we can kind of just let them those two kind of go play you know and then Nick Vanette you know you even saw it against the Saints game I think kind of people thought he was a little bit of just a blocker kind of just kind of a extra tackle almost glorified and you know he's pretty good at the ball in space and then those two young guys uh awesome to keep them around I think you look around the league and everyone's looking for tight ends. Everyone's looking for those body types, guys that can block. I think there's a ton of guys that are really one spot players are either good in the pass game and really deficient in the run game or vice versa. And I think they've done a really nice job of kind of building that skill set. And, you know, I don't think anybody would have put those two guys on the 53 in April. And I don't think there was really a lot of question for us that they were both 53 players. Calvin had a big game in his first game with, with Trevor last year. Mm -hmm. 100 yards of TD, but then he had three that were kind of sluggish before things took off. So it seems like it took him a while with Trevor. Is there anything to be learned from from the beginning of their relationship where you had a front row seat to the beginning of his relationship with Will? I think there's probably always adjustments. You know, when you're a new player of learning how they're going to adjust to him, right? So I think in Jacksonville a little bit, they first game he kind of came out, like I said, it was gangbusters, and then Really, there were adjustments, and then as a staff, we had to adjust and things like that. And I'm sure there'll be some of that here, too, with our personnel and kind of how what we will put on tape with this group, I think formationally and things like that, will be interesting to see how that goes. But I think that's true of kind of everybody that's going to, you know, you look through everybody's season, they're always going to have up and down. So I think we would, you know, in Jacksonville, I knew we weren't too worried about it, and I kind of feel like we'll be the same here with that. Callahan touched on it a, a little bit, but I'm curious what your perspective is as far as like when you have three number one level receivers, like how do you go about making sure that they're involved early and keeping them checked in? There's a little bit formationally where we can kind of keep moving guys around to where we think the ball is going to go, but everything's really true progression reads for the quarterback. You know, I think we're we're going to try to have them give them a starting point and maybe different reps. The starting point is, you know, D hop on this play, it's Calvin on this play, it's Tyler, it's maybe one of the backs or whatever, but we can try to do that. But if they take it away, you know, we're, we're just not just going to force it to anybody either. So I think when you see offenses that are really humming, the the ball just kind of moves. You know what I mean? They see You see them take somebody away, the quarterback and the rest of the offense kind of is prepared for where to go in the progressions. Kind of won the job, I guess, in a way after Sadiq Charles left suddenly but uh, what have you seen from Dylan Raidens that lets you know he's ready to be a full-time starter on this line yeah I, w I wouldn't say he kind of fell into anything I think he definitely earned the job and you know really where he's kind of improved is I think he's playing with really great power you know I think for some of the times he was just kind of 
a little hesitant. I think he's just playing with so such confidence now that he's playing really fast and he's playing aggressive. And for us, I think seeing him do those things have been kind of very um, settling for us, right? We can we kind of really have a consistency of him in that. So. Callahan mentioned he only has a handful of games where he's been on the field calling plays, uh, really in any capacity. Yeah. What do you think is the key to making that work week one? You know, I think we had a really good. It was good for us in the pre. You know, the preseason is great for us because he was sitting up there, and I think the first couple plays he was like, "Oh man, this is different." You know, and it's you just your angles are different, which I can really help him kind of. I know what he used to look for up there, kind of when he was in the box and things like that. So really during the game, I'm communicating all that information to him as it's happening. And then that's kind of been a good process for us. And then our staff has been really good about giving him, and our players have been really good about giving him accurate feedback as they come off the field or during the play. So, you know, we're a pretty talkative group on the headset. There's kind of a, Brian can hand, you know, he can handle that of a lot of guys kind of giving him information. And so he's able to take it in really quickly. So I, I don't think it's been an issue and hopefully it won't be. So. How would you see JC improve it as far as knowing what to do and going out to execute it and how week one ready do you think he is? Oh, we think he's week one ready, but you know, it's everybody's, uh, you know, it's regular season speed is, you know, different than preseason speed. And I'm sure there'll be some, you know, growing pains there as well, but I've seen him grow in his consistency of technique, right? So I think, you know, as you guys know, Bill, he's, you know, so detailed and JC now kind of, there is no indecision in him and the techniques to use, things like that. So he plays really fast. So now, you know, he's not, in college, he's a pretty big, strong guy and just kind of could physically manhandle people. But at this level, you know, he knows he's not gonna be able to do that. So watching him grow that way has been really what gives us a lot of confidence. Is it fair to expect 100% D-hop, I guess, even if he plays this week, given all the missed practice time, new offense, coming off the injury too? No, I, I don't know if you could expect 100%, but I also, you know, he's a great player and he's been a great player for a long time. And I don't think we're ready to, you know, I think learned long ago that great players kind of rise to the occasion and they kind of got to get that kind of super power skill to kind of show up. So we're not going to mentally pre limit what he can do, but we'll kind of see how it's going. And if he's ready to go, we'll expect him to have a sizable role. First time NFL head coach, offensive coordinator, and defensive coordinator. What's the last few weeks and few months been like for you guys? And how do you think you individually have grown? Oh, God, I, uh, I think we've all grown, you know, just in there's so many things that come up every day, you know, and we've done a the preseason was really good for us. We went through kind of our full coaching process for each game. So, you know, we have a couple meetings in the on like Friday and Saturday morning with the uh, analytics and kind of game day decision making and all these situations. And we watch a whole bunch of just situations from around the league that have happened in the last 10, 15 years of just, okay, how do we want to handle this? How do we want to do this thing? So, you know, for I think all four of us, you know, all three coordinators and Brian, I think we feel pretty confident that we've got, you know, a lot of the stuff, but I'm sure there's, you know, stones we haven't over are unturned yet. Um, and then how, how have I grown? Ugh, I don't know. I'm not, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to, just trying to survive the first day and then we'll, we'll get through that one. How would you describe your game day responsibilities and just kind of what did you learn? What did you expect from those three preseason games? How did it position you for what you're going to be doing on Sunday? Yeah. So, you know, Brian's the play caller, so it's really, a lot of my job is in between the series because he's still helping manage the game, especially on defense. So um, with that, you know, when we have the ball, I have a little bit of suggestions. He'll say, hey, Nick, give me a third down. Hey, what if you're next, what do you like here? Those kind of things, you know, at the end of the game in the red zone, kind of just a second opinion on that. And then in between series, I've got a lot of kind of, hey, I help, you know, Bill and I kind of help set him up the next rack of, hey, let's get to these three, four things next on your normal down distance. Let's stack the third downs for you where we want to go. And then, um, so I, that process was really good just from, you know, we were working a limited game plan, but I think we feel good about where it's going to go. And then, yeah, during the play, I'm kind of just giving him live feedback. I'm, you know, watching it, not like a fan, but I'm telling him, hey, safety's down here. This is the, the ball should go here. And he, so it kind of can uh, just kind of get the fuller picture. Through and put that script together, you know, having a, a, a new offensive line, how much do you weigh in wanting to get those guys in the rhythm? Whereas, like, obviously, you know, 
they like firing off and be the attacker in the run game. How do you balance that, like make, getting them involved? Yeah, I think there's – everybody wants to be balanced. You know what I mean? But we also are very much – we want to kind of – take what the defense gives us a little bit. So if they're going to load the box, we're not just going to, you know, uh, run our head against a wall and things like that. So we have a lot of plays that have flexibility in them. Okay, it's a run, pass, can checks, things like that. So it kind of gives us the best of both worlds and the look. So those, sometimes those things take care of itself, but we want to be balanced. You know, I, we ran the football more than anybody else in the league in the preseason, I think. So, you know, we've shown that we want to run it. And I think we, to have success, we need to run it, so. Running back split with, with Tajay and Tony, you expect it to, to change from week to week based on opponent, how they're doing, or how, how would you see things going from a snap count standpoint? I would, we still really think 50-50, and then there's some where we have them, you know, kind of earmarked, like this is a, a handful of plays. that These are just Tajay's plays. These are Tony's plays. And then the rest of them are really interchangeable. So, you know, especially in some situations, we have some stuff where, okay, we want to get these guys in or get them both in or get, you know, get, move guys around or put them in different spots. So, yeah, we've got, we've, I, we still feel it is pretty interchangeable. From the time of this process, you know, just you guys arriving here, what, where have you seen the most advancement in Will's game? Uh, I would say defensive recognition. I think he now see. I think he sees the defense really well, and so he knows where he wants to go. So I, he sees the safety down. I know this, this, this. I think that kind of process for him. And then I think in pass protection, kind of, you know, when he knows what he wants and how he, you know, if he wants to throw hot off of this guy or manipulate, I know my, I go. I got a slant over here, so I can push the line a different way, or I can move different bodies like that. I think he's really grown in just seeing how all the pieces fit together. Caleb Williams and, and, and Collins, guy who obviously had an incredible stat, but also held the ball a lot. Uh, is that something you guys can use to your advantage, or, or is he just so good at getting away from defenders that, that that's why that number is a little bit high? Well, I mean, obviously he's a, he's a good quarterback. You know, I've been following this young man since he was in high school. He went to one of my rival high schools in Gonzaga, so I've seen the progression from him when he left there to go to USC. Uh, he's a dynamic quarterback. You know, you see him, he can make all the throws. He, he does have an outstanding uh, ability to escape in the pocket. You know, it's, it's our job, just like any other quarterback that we play, we got to keep the quarterback in the pocket and make him earn it as a drop back passer. So, um, you know, we're focusing on the details, on how we rushing, uh, maintaining our lane integrity, and, and we'll see what happens when we come out there. One of the things you obviously want to do is make him uncomfortable. Uh, mixing packages, blitzing, and things like that. Like, how important is it to be able to throw the sink at them but still have that? that well, I, I don't know if it's all about throwing the sink at them. It's just like any quarterback in the, in the NFL. If you give them a clear picture to look at on a, on a uh, repeat basis, they can carve you up. So for us, you know, we'll have multiple looks. We'll do certain things to mix it up. But it's, it's no different, you know, going against Caleb or any other quarterback in the National Football League. Uh, you show them multiple things and see if they can adjust and they can read it uh, pre and post snap. What have you seen from the guys on the back end of your defensive line and how are you feeling about your, your sub possibilities there? Well, I, mean, I like the guys. You know, we've created a couple groups, uh, rush groups. Uh, the, obviously, the starters are the starters. And then some of the other guys have developed. Um, we've done a good job. And I think, you know, Ben Bloom and Tracy Rocker has done an outstanding job of developing guys, their skill set, how to work, you know, the edges, how to power rush, how to win their one on ones. And I think that everybody has a fastball, all right, and they have the one thing to, to, to rely on. And we wanted to come out when they get the opportunity to go rush and play this weekend. How's Ernest fit in since he's gotten here? And just kind of what dimension does he add to the defense? Oh, Ernest is outstanding. You know, one thing about Ernest, he's a very smart player. Uh, he's quiet, but he plays a little bit louder. Um, so he's been able to fit in perfectly. Frank Bush has done a great job getting him acclimated. You know, one thing about the linebacker group, it's a group of brothers, just like the defense here in general. And Gibby and, and, and uh, Kenneth have, you know, brought him under their wing, trying to help him when they can help him. And when, you know, he'll be out there and he'll be ready to play come Sunday. You have a Cliff Snow's version, maybe on Ali Gay, Daryl Baker, Julius Wood, and how have you tried to incorporate them into to what you're doing? Well, you know, Ali, you know, he's a he's a long, athletic defensive end. Um, he's a rush. He'll be able to come in. You, when you watched him in Houston in the preseason, you know, he got off the ball extremely well. He could collapse the pocket. He can win on the edge. I think, you know, that's a skill set that fits him. He's long, you know, and, and he can run. You know, when you talk about the the, the um, with 
uh, Lynch and everybody else. It's just getting them all acclimated. Right now, it's been like the first week of getting these guys, learning the defense, uh, putting them in position where they understand their job, their job responsibility. And as we go out here and practice, the more they could pick up, the more they'll play. What's been the toughest part maybe for you or, or maybe the biggest challenge in being a play caller uh, for the first time? Uh, well, right now, it's just the unknown of the first game. You know, obviously, you know, uh, Shane Waldron was in Seattle last year. Now he's in Chicago. Um, they have different pieces than they had last year. It's how does he fit the pieces in, you know, where's what what receivers are going to play in what spots, things of that nature. It's the it's the unknown of what they're going to do in the first game. But, you know, just like any first game or anything you do for the first time, you hold on to your fundamentals and technique. This game is going to be about tackling. It's going to be about playing aggressive. It's about being smart football players. And they're going to give us, they're going to give us something we haven't seen. But if we play by our rules and we do our job and our job responsibility, we'll be just fine. What do you think you learned maybe in the preseason about, about call plays, you know, as you were, as you were there in the summer? Just having patience, you know, because um, you're not going to be perfect and there's no perfect call, right? So sometimes you make a call, I think the worst thing is to have a slow, a slow call. Um, if you get the call out and allow the players to adjust and make plays, that's the biggest thing. But for me, it's just being patient um, and, and picking spots uh, when I want to do certain things. Thanks. I'd imagine the secondary is a bit more personal for you. You guys invested a lot in it here. How do you balance maybe the inclination to be more hands-on with that group if that still exists with your other duties? Well, that's, it, it was harder early on, right? Like when we were here in OTAs, obviously coming in, you're putting in the defense and coverages and things that you want. So uh, you, you, got to get, you have to get the players caught up and also the coaches, right? Because you can say something, but at times you have to go out there and demonstrate it. You have to go do it. And our DB coaches, Steve Jackson and Chris Harris, have done an outstanding job of – um, they know what I want from the secondary, um, how I want them to play, where they should be in certain defenses. And, it, you know, it's been, a, um, it's been an easy transition to this point. But when I first got here, that was the hardest thing because my eyes were always going back to the back end. What do you see in the trio of receivers that the Bears have, adding Keenan Allen, a veteran, and drafting Roma Dunze? Uh, I mean, this is an explosive group. It's probably one of the best groups in the National Football League. They all have different skill sets. Um, DJ Moore is another guy that, you know, he, he went to Maryland, so I watched him closely coming up. You know, he's an explosive player. He's really good without the, with the ball in his hand. Keenan Allen, I mean, he's, he's been a pro bowler for years. He's very consistent in what he does. Uh, he can give you nightmares if, you, if you're not uh, detailed with your eye discipline and being where you're supposed to be. And then, and then the Duze, the rookie, you know, he's a guy that can run every route. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a challenge for our guys, but they're up for the challenge. Um, we brought in some DBs to, to match firepower. So I believe in the guys we have, and I believe in our defense, and we'll go out there and be extremely competitive against them. How does a quarterback like Williams, you know, he's dynamic, he stands a play, he throws off plat platform. How does that change like, or impact your pass rush and, and also put extra stress, stress on the back? And I would imagine, you know, plaster is a word that you're looking for. Right. I mean, it's, for, for us, it's about playing with discipline. Like, you can't have selfish plays. You know, everybody wants to go get theirs as a pass rusher, but you got to understand this guy can hurt you escaping the pocket. So it's about us being disciplined in what we do. And it's about having discipline in the back end. If I'm a deep half player, I need to stay in the deep half. If I'm in man coverage, I can't leave my man until the ball is thrown. So for us, you know, it's about doing what we do as a defense, but being disciplined and, and playing the game the right way. And it's going to be plays that he's going to make. We know that. That's any quarterback in the National Football League. But it's how we respond to it. How do we make it right if we give up a play? And, and that's what our mindset is. But, we, you know, we're going into this thing and we're going to be aggressive uh, against them. Is that kind of discipline something you can see in practice or walkthroughs? Or is it something you kind of have to see on game day to, to know if you have it? No, you do it in practice. I mean, it, obviously in practice, you know, you have periods where you make the quarterback scramble a little bit put the pressure on the DBs to stay in coverage to plaster. You, you know, you can try to simulate it, you know, but in games, in game speed, it is what it is. We got a lot of guys that played in the National Football League that have success that's going against quarterbacks that move around. I mean, this league now is kind of gone, gone that way now. It's, it's not a whole lot of true drop back passers. So guys move around and they know how to play it. They know how to handle business. And um, that's what we plan to do. Quarterbacks, even the good ones, have had a hard time finding wins in their debut in recent history. Do you think it 
works to your advantage that this is Caleb's first game and what kind of things can you do defensively to make sure you exploit some of that inexperience? I just want our line, I want our D line, I want our linebackers and I want our DBs to come out and play fundamentally sound football, play like a Titan. And if we do that, I don't worry about who's the quarterback, how many years he's had. If we play the right way, we give our opposite a, a chance to win, an opportunity to win. But you have a number two, big, do you have a number two big nickel or, or number two dime safety in the in the mold of Adams or some of those positions, Jamal specific? I guess we got to see when we uh, line up on Sunday. How, uh, how do you think your personality will be as a defensive coordinator on game days? I know you're going to motivate guys, but also when things don't go perfect, calming them down and how good a job you do keeping an even keel you think you know i've i've been taught and i've you know gone through my career you stress players at practice you create uh habit stressful situations but in the game it's their day the game is already stressful for it for you know when they line up so you can't add stress to them you know it's about leading them getting them right direction before we line up and play on sunday but on, sun on sunday we're there for them and when they have moments where uh, they're not playing their best, you know, sometimes you have to snatch their, uh, snatch their attention. But it's about them playing free, playing what they see, believing in, in the uh, execution, the game plan. And that's just how we go about it. Um, I'm cool, calm, and collective on the sideline on game day. What kind of message last month? Your rookies uh, playing for the first time, Sweat, Harold, Brownlee, your, your guys that will be going out there for the first they're time. They're no longer rookies. They're no longer rookies, you know, for, and we've been saying that since day one, since they've been here, right? They're going to go out there in the mix, and it's, it's time for them to grow up. And just like anything you do in life, you learn by doing, right? So they're going to go out there, and they're going to execute and play as hard as they can, and we deal with the results, you know, after the play. If they, they do well, it's good for them. If they make a mistake, we just make it right, all right? And they, they'll grow game by game, day by day, but they can't be rookies anymore because we're going to rely on them.